AMS special session on quaternions. Uh, it's sort of session that's organized by uh, myself, Terence Blackman, uh, Chris McCarthy, and, and Johannes Hamilton. Uh, this is our third year of kind of doing this, and uh, just want to welcome you. Our first speaker today is, is John Hutchins, and he's doing some work that's joint with Ed Schwartz. Uh, they're from Winston-Salem State, and uh, quaternions and involutions of G2. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I had gone to this session, I think the first time we had it, and enjoyed it, and then I talked to some people. So thanks for remembering. Um, I didn't start out <coughs> trying to study quaternions. I, I was trying to study algebraic group theory and uh, generalized symmetric spaces. But uh, when, going, when looking at exceptional groups, the quaternions come up a lot. So I, I thought I would just start with, or this talk will be about how the quaternions come up for algebraic groups of type G2 uh, when we're trying to classify generalized symmetric spaces. Okay, so I, I'm going to start with sort of the results and then fill in the details just so, you know, in case time is up. <laughs> but here's how, the, here's how the story ends, I guess, is that if you have a quaternion subalgebra of an octonian algebra, so we're thinking of groups of type G2 as the automorphism group of an octonian algebra, and if you have a quaternion subalgebra that's fixed by an element of order 2, and we'll see that uh, every element of order two in the automorphism group of the octonians will fix a quaternion subalgebra. Then the involutions, at least when characteristic is not two, the involutions are completely determined by the isomorphism classes of the quaternion subalgebra. And so, uh, and so you get just two types of involutions. Then. And, and how this, I guess, all plays out is that for each class of involutions and characteristic not to, you get a fixed point group. So this is a subgroup of G2 uh, that fixes a quaternion subalgebra of a certain type. And then we're, what we want to do in the end is take the quotient of the, of the whole group with this fixed point group. And, and that's how we're going to construct that generalized symmetry. OK, so when D is split, we get a PGL2 uh, with essentially SL2. But but these, really what this is, and, and I'll abbreviate it later, is that this is the automorphism group. The first part of the, of the product is the automorphism group with the quaternion algebra, depending on the type. And the second part are just the norm one quaternions. So it's just it's the automorphism group with this little <coughs> extra piece. OK. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe just one other thing. So the, this will be a representative of the uh, Involutions that fix a split type of quaternion subalgebra, and then every other thing comes from division algebra, and it will be a product of that original thing with some other thing, uh, which is another element of order two. And these alpha betas essentially are um, there's a very straightforward correspondence between them and and the thing that's defining the norm on the quaternion. So these are like your if you have like two Pfister forms or something, these essentially are the alpha and beta. Up to plus or minus. I can't okay, and then so we <laughs> we did this over characteristic two also. So uh, we briefly talk about that at the end. Uh, characteristic two things fall apart uh, in a way ge geometrically they fall apart. So uh, you still have these quaternion subalgebras, um, but you, you know everything in characteristic two is perpendicular to itself, um, and so you have all these problems that come up. Uh, and you get these other types of four-dimensional subalgebras. So these involutions are still fixing uh, subalgebra that's four dimensions, but we don't call all the four-dimensional subalgebras quaternion anymore, only the ones that are uh, non-singular. So if you have a non-singular bilinear form, we'll call it quaternion. And, and these actually have a totally singular bilinear form. So everything's perpendicular to everything in the, in the other four-dimensional subalgebra. Anyway, so this breaks apart. and. Uh, it's sort of an interesting way because there's only, uh, so there are, so if you take uh, a field of characteristic two over like a function field, uh, you can get division algebras that are quaternion, but there are no involutions that fix them. The only involutions that fix a quaternion subalgebra fix split types. And then the only thing that you get that's sort of like a division algebra, I guess eventually this is a division algebra, are these totally <coughs> similar uh, subalgebras that are sort of 
strange and only exist in characteristic two. Okay, so let's we'll start with the characteristic not two. This is what I'm mostly comfortable with. Uh, and so this is this is where the project began, which was if you have an involution on an algebraic group, a uh, reductive algebraic group, um, then you can define uh, generalized symmetric space. And these things come up in representation theory and all sorts of geometry problems. Uh, so we want to do this over every field uh, and, and eventually other things, but um, this, is the, this is the object we're searching for and trying to classify. It's the, it's the original group uh, modded out by the fixed point group. <coughs> right, so let's just start with this definition of a composition algebra and we'll, and we'll, and we'll build up. And the only reason and we'll see the contrast when we get to characteristic two and see how these things change. So everything that we have here is depending on the norm, Q of the composition algebra, the automorphism group is of the eight-dimensional and the octonian algebra. It's all of our eight-dimensional algebras are split, and we'll see how that goes. And then this is the bilinear form that's associated with it. Okay, so in the characteristic not two case, you can always choose an orthogonal basis, so we'll, we'll use this to stand for the orthogonal basis. And, the, and I'll put this slide up too also to contrast the characteristic two case, because in the characteristic two case, these relations are going to change uh, in order to get the geometry that you want. Okay, so we have an orthogonal basis uh, and these things squared to some multiple of the identity. So we generate the outcome. Okay, so we're, we're only doing this for split types of G2, so all of our octonians are going to be split, so we can always construct an octonian, a split octonian algebra by doubling a split quaternion algebra, so that's the basis we're sort of thinking about when we look at all these specifically. So, uh, you know, the split quaternions are isomorphic to M2K, so we can choose a basis for the octonian uh, or a form that looks like this, just a pair of two by two matrices. Uh, there's a product that you can define that I'm not going to. And then the, the norm on this, you can just choose the norm to be the determinant of the first matrix minus the determinant of the second matrix. And so, and that, and that will be what we use to, that's a quick way to check if a quaternion subalgebra is split or not. So maybe we'll look at some specific quaternion algebras and subalgebra in a second. Okay, so if we choose this basis, then this is the uh, k-split maximal torus, so this is, you know, the, the maximal uh, community of subalgebra here. Uh, it's got two parameters, these alpha and betas, and it's going to turn out that this alpha and beta correspond exactly to the the parameters that define the quaternion norm. So they're in completely in one-to-one -one correspondence when we choose um, uh, a representative to fix a specific quaternion subalgebra uh, for a specific class of evolution. Okay. So if we use our basis from before, this is, uh, this is a thing that uh, fixes a split quaternion subalgebra. So, but we're conjugating by it. So we're conjugating I guess the torus by it. But this is the thing that hits the quaternion, I mean the octonian. And so if we think about what this happens on the group, so if you think about the group as a, as a matrix group of eight by eight matrices, it's just sort of, you know, on this torus, it's flipping the first four around in the opposite direction, it's flipping <coughs> the last four around the opposite direction. So it's sending everything to its inverse, which is important in the invariant theory for algebraic group theory, but we're going to talk about quaternion. Okay, so what it comes down to is this, and this is just, I think, I, I can't remember how serious Jacobson labeled this. It might have just been a, a comment in, the, in a paragraph, but we're gonna call it a proposition. And it says this, it says that if two elements in the octonian, an automorphism group of an octonian algebra uh, square to the identity, they're conjugate if and only if they fix isomorphic quaternion so. And so, that first element we looked at, this is the quaternion subalgebra it fixes. So notice that if you take the, you, you know, you can take the norm of this plus this, it's the determinant minus the ter determinant, it's zero, so this is a split subalgebra. And also you could have chosen the first thing to be a split subalgebra and just negate the second thing that's another uh, representative. Okay. 
And so over certain fields, uh, we're going to get division algebras. Uh, so if we look at the real case, so this is uh, a nice safe place to be uh, as far as fields go. Uh, this is a division algebra. This is subalgebra of the original Octonian algebra. So this is the basis for it. And then uh, this is fixed by the element, so G star, so our original element times the torus. So if we go back to the torus, so all we're doing, we're just plugging one and negative one in for alpha and beta, and then taking a multiple of that original element. So that will fix this, which is a division quaternion algebra, so you, and you can check that. And um, so this is a new, so this is how we know this fixes a new class. Uh, notice also, something to notice, is that all the alpha and beta inputs are coming from the square classes of the field. So having more square classes is going to allow for more division algebras, which is allowing for more evolutions and more symmetric spaces. Okay, so this is the piatics. Um, you get a class of division algebras for the piatics, and they look like this. And again, all these entries are coming from the square classes. And for the piatics, the square class looks like the identity, the prime, and this is the first, this is the smallest non-square, and this is the product of the prime of the smallest non-square. So you get one class of division algebra. And then, I think I have one more. Yeah, so Q, so Q is sort of the worst, right, uh, in a way, or the most interesting, I guess. In another way, in that there's an infinite number of these things, so any, any unique prime that's, maybe this should be not equal, I can't remember. But there's, there's a, an infinite family of, of prime numbers where you can construct quaternion division algebras over Q, and so for each unique prime of this form, we're going to get a new class. So we have an infinite number of evolutions for, for Q, and we have an infinite number of, of symmetric spaces. Okay, so this is, this is just sort of the summary of this. So if you have an algebraic closed field or a finite field, as long as the characteristic isn't 2, and also if characteristic 2, there is only one isomorphism class of these. Um, for R and the two addicts, you can use the same representatives just because of how the square classes uh, break down. For the P addicts, we saw that these are the guys that, that pick out the division algebra, so that's the extra one other than the split case. And then we have an infinite number for Q. And everything, in, you know, the fixed point groups always end up taking this form. We have the automorphism group with the quaternion subalgebra, and then what I'm calling f one k but it's really just the norm one quaternions. Okay, so characteristic two. There's a few slides, but we'll just uh, sort of contrast what happens here. So in characteristic two, when we're constructing a basis for the quaternions and the octonians, we, we can't let everything be orthogonal because then we'll have a totally singular space. So, uh, so we have this one sort of unique element that's not orthogonal to the identity, and this will be our what's called a symplectic basis. Uh, and so we have slightly different um, relations here. Uh, and the thing to, to notice here is that, so this E, U, V, U, V, so this will be a quaternion subalgebra, has this thing that's not perpendicular to something else. But if you choose something like E, V, W, and V, W, all of those elements are perpendicular to each other. So you have a you have a basis of elements that are all perpendicular to each other, so everything in the space is perpendicular to each other. So you have a totally singular subspace, and so, you know, you lose some geometry that you would maybe like to have. Okay. So you still have the same thing, so we're not calling those totally singular spaces quaternion algebras, but you still have the same thing where they are isomorphic, um, but yeah, they, I'm sorry. They fix four-dimensional subalgebras, either of quaternion type or of the totally singular type. And so we, we think of this as decomposing the octonian algebra in two different ways. So either fixing a, a D or a B, D would be our quaternion algebra, and B would be our totally singular subalgebra. Uh, okay, so let's look at the quaternion case. So in the quaternion case, you can always break up elements of order, you know, automorphism order two that fix a quaternion this way. Uh, so we'll say x is in the quaternion 
subalgebra fixed by t and what x and y are, and then uh, so we're fixing x, and then r is a quaternion element of uh, norm one that's acting on the second part. So in the in the characteristic not two case, you can always take this to just be a negative. You can always do x minus y w. But when we have characteristic two, we don't really have negatives that are unique from positives. So uh, this is, I mean, when we're thinking of a split case, we're just thinking of this as some order two, two by two matrix that's acting on Y. So think one, one, zero, one or something. In characteristic two, that's an order two matrix. So if R squares the identity, then this is a non-trivial uh, map that squares the identity. Okay, so this is the thing that was sort of weird about all this is that you can't fix a division uh, quaternion subalgebra in characteristic two. Uh, it turns out that if something squares the identity in a division algebra, then it's, it has to equal the identity. So in other words, in division algebras over characteristic two, everything has a unique norm. Uh, so the norm completely identifies it. And I don't know if the same thing is. Okay, so on type one, uh, we fix a quaternion subalgebra. D has to be split, so we're thinking of the two by two matrices. Um, there's only one conjugacy class of involutions for this type. And we get sort of a stranger, strange uh, fixed point group. It looks like SL2 and then direct sum with the additive group. So it's sort of are compared to the other ones in my mind, it may not be. Uh, and then type two, so we're fixing this totally singular sum algebra. Uh, so we have three types. Uh, it can be split, so you think of, of the diagonal uh, norm, or the, the, you know, the Pfister form over characteristic not to. This would just be like having ones uh, for alpha and beta. And you can also have this intermediate type where you have like a represent, so this would be representing the squares and this would be some element representing uh, something from a new square class and you can have a division algebra where you have two unique elements here. And notice that these are actually quadratic field extensions. Uh, so you're, actually this is a four dimensional subfield of the octonians when we talk about that. Uh, so in this case there can be many cases of involutions of all C. And one of the weird things that came up here was that uh, you can have an infinite family of non-conjugate involutions that all have the same fixed point group. So in characteristic not to, there's sort of a bijection between conjugacy classes of involutions and conjugacy classes of fixed point groups, and, and that falls apart here. Uh, and then, so we get a similar sort of setup from the, to the original in that we have an automorphism group semi-direct product with something else. And, and we didn't describe this for time reasons, but it, it's sort of like the norm one thing in the characteristic, not two cases, some norm dependent subalgebra that sorry, has an added part. And I might be on the slides. Seven minutes of questions for speaker. No questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>